Okay, here we go. Holy cow, I'm sweating because it's hot in here, but also because I'm jacked. You know why? Because I follow MAPS programs. By the way, we're going to give away a MAPS program again, because that's what we do on every single video that we post on this YouTube channel, because we love you guys and girls and everyone else that uh, identifies as something else. We love all of you. Here's how you can win a free MAPS hit program. So in today's episode, we talk about some of the first jobs that we took. Adam, for example, milked cows. One time a cow pooped on him. You'll hear that in this episode. Really interesting story. Nonetheless, let's hear about your first jobs in the comments. Talk about it. Tell us why it sucked, why it was great, what you learned from it. We'll pick the best comment. And if we pick the best comment and it's yours, you win free access to Maps Hit. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Otherwise, you win nothing. Finally, we are running a sale right now. Maps Hit and the No BS Six Pack Formula, 50% off. You can go check them out at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code July Special with no space for the discount. All right, enjoy this podcast. It's a fan, bro. Look at yeah. That. We used to do that in school all the time. It's hot in here. Yeah. yeah. And what I was saying is, back in the day, thousands of years ago, or whatever, kings and queens didn't have AC, right? Because it didn't exist. No. And By the way, this is kind of interesting factoid. You're lower middle class today. You have way more stuff than kings and queens did 500 years ago. Yeah, so why are we still exist. complaining? Anyway. Yeah. They would have like servants and stuff, it's like when you think about that. just stand there with a big like like a big like leaf or I don't know what they would use big fake and they're just all day long. That's yeah. what they would do. That was your job. Does this, this feel good, yeah. master? Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and then you get the the, the the poor bastard who has to feed them grapes all the time. Yeah. Do you yeah. think that was ever a paid position? So gross. Or was that, you think always slaves, and then it was just you're a done. king. You ain't paying nobody. Well, no, I'm saying that particular thing, but I feel like there was got to be a time too. There's got to be people who wanted AC that weren't kings too. That had money. What do you mean? Mm. Like somebody who like had merchants enough money. or something. Yeah, before, oh, merchants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Before, yeah, before we got to a place where Dude, your foot just touched mine. That was kind of weird. Wow. Yeah. I, don't, I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> There's something very weird. <laughs> Intimate about yeah. touching another man's foot with your foot. <laughs> I can hold your hand. You interweave you the toes. Look at Justin's hammer. Just don't toes, look dude. at my toes, you guys. <laughs> I'm, dude, thank, thank God, God dude, hey, thank the cameras God can't go that low. Dude. Yeah, we just subscribers. Hey, that's the, those are the feet yeah. of athletes, bro. Uh, bro, you can, yeah, you can climb I grip it. really well, you, you guys. Trees. I grip, but yeah. I don't do anything. You else look like well. you climb trees with. That's it, though. Like just, or it looks like for fun, Courtney smashes them. <laughs> no, bro. Hey, hey. bro, I'm telling you guys. Uh, so my dad has this. He calls it like hammer toe, or whatever. But like, <laughs> he got to like a point where he had to break each one of the toes. Oh, yes, yeah, so I have that to look forward to. I'm not Ooh. happy about you it. You have to break your toes. Like arthritis in his toes. Yeah, because it curled so far where it started curling under and, and putting pressure. You got like really painful arthritis. Is that now? Hold on. Is that because your dad? Because your dad's a big guy. He's, he's a big guy. Yeah, Is it because his shoes seven. never fit? Maybe I have no idea because I have the same thing, so yeah. I don't know why. It's not that bad. It's oh, dude. I mean, it's, I mean it could be worse. Yeah, like, it could be. be. Have you guys ever seen pro basketball players' feet? You ever seen yeah, pictures? Yeah, those are disgusting too. Yeah. Bro, his feet are like is just like, smashed. Oh yeah, <laughs> this, his toes are on top of each other. Like I think this. it's are they all I think it's an athlete's just feet. His? Is, have you seen? I don't know if I okay. So it's very common. For, look up pro athletes' feet, boy. His his search is gonna be so good. <laughs> yeah. Keep I've been dude, setting dude, him up, bro. The, he has no idea. Ew, like a disgusting foot just right here. The NSA is gonna come. How to murder someone? This is talking about athletes' feet. Whale dicks. Yeah, you never yeah, know what's coming. Yeah. But if you're if you're a big guy uh, and you're not and you don't have a lot of money, like where's your mom gonna find size 15 shoes? You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> she's gonna go to the store and be like, "What's the biggest one you, you got?" Think that's the circus. You think that's yeah. the, that's what happened? Yeah. Why do you think his feet are like this? That's not natural. I mean, dude. I don't know. I don't know why. They it's because he grew up, didn't have the money to buy size 16 or whatever. Is that, else. Have you read an article or a story? That says I've read that? articles about that about. Uh, tall no, the people. same zoo friend ones of yours, I feel the, like. <laughs> <laughs> those, 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 I have, yeah, I talked to my zoo friends about that one. Hey, They're the ones who told me. Hey, I have, they don't really pay that much attention to the animals, I'm according to, this, to Adam. Yeah, yeah. I have, <laughs> I'm on to this guy. Yeah. They're not yeah. real scientists. I have, yeah, I have friends that are experts in the toe business. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, dude. Damn, dude. Yeah, but where would you? That's you, what I was talking about the other day, dude. Even when he's wrong, he sounds right. But I somewhat agree. Like, Where would you get that big a shoe? It's true. What are you going to get? What that. size shoes your dad wear? But he's like 14. Yeah, he's he's 13 and a half or, or 14, yeah. yeah. So you think these people are they've been just in tiny shoes. Not, I mean, I know I that's mean, the the like the just um, pressed. What what culture was that where they used Jap to Japan? Is it Japan? Oh, they used to the buy the feet. Yeah, they used to yeah. Is that what it is? Does? China. 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 Oh, China. Oh, it was China. oh, I thought it was Oh, yeah, right. Wait, yeah, no, was, no, no, no. Don't the, didn't the no, geishas no, in Japan do? I thought it was China. Okay. It was China. Oh, 
And they used to like, oh, why am I so they wrong? want they wanted women's feet to be small, right? Is that what the, the that's correct? Yeah, right. that was so more they would desirable. Only, like, keep them in a, a right. certain size. Mm. So okay, that makes like sense. But Basically you're applying that. You to I'm gonna look up foot bindings. I, I swear, I, could, I thought it was there are 15 size shoes. So. You're right. It was only China. Mm. Damn, I should know this. Doug knows everything about Japan. I should yeah, know he's an so, Asian expert. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everything's weird about it. Yeah. No, you know, they used to, so they would bind their feet so much. Have you ever seen pictures of what these women's uh, feet look like? Yeah. It's I like this. Wish I didn't. It's like, yeah, yeah, like S's underneath it. Yeah, it's like, this. it looks like a little hoof. Yeah, and then the toes are like, that's super it. Super sad. And then when they walk, it's like, dee, 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 well, dee. there's that. And then there's also those cultures where they have um, really long toenails that they just let go forever. And then they almost calcify because they're so big and long and they're curling all the way out. And it's like, they can barely walk. They have to like get things to prop them up. What I don't understand is how, how that was, how was that an attractive thing? I don't know. It's like a display. I don't know. I think it's just different. And some cultures desire certain things I, and I feel it like becomes a, a celebrity in their culture. Cause this is what happens here, right? A celebrity says something's cool. Everybody decides it's cool. I bet you somebody back in the day was like, you know what? It's cool to have long ass time. Everybody's like, let's do it because you know, Ooga Booga has it or whatever. Yeah. Just make up a name from a tribe. Or whatever. Ooga Booga. I don't know. So that's thinking <laughs> caveman or whatever. <laughs> but listen, Hey, so, so here's the thing with feet. They're gross. That was a really bad for I know. <laughs> really I just try to come up with a weird name. I don't Gronk. I, yeah. Gronk, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. understand the deal yeah. with feet. I don't get it. They're gross all the time. No matter what, feet are gross. Are they? Yeah. I don't yeah. like feet. I agree. Yes, I'm not down with you. the feet. No, I mean, I not like, no finish here. Feet? Like women's sexy feet? No. No? No, give them away from Listen, I my my wife has the a most adorable feet, but it's not I'm not like a I pretend guy. to like them. I'm just mm, mm, yeah. you know, <laughs> I'll massage them at you know way over here. Really? Oh, yeah, dude. Are you a toe sucker? Not a toe sucker. Ugh. I mean, I would, I, honey, I would kiss your toes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, you, my hey, God. Hey, you asked me. Hey, it's getting kid. weird, dude. I she would, was a, would, she was a D1 by basketball player. I don't I know if you want to suck on their toes, bro. I love that woman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love that woman. I will suck your toes, baby. Yeah. That's the thing. I, I don't, though. I'm not a big toe sucker. But I also think, I mean, she's got cute feet. You know? Yeah. You know yeah. And I like cute feet. I don't like ugly feet, though. No. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, there's just... No. There's some cultures. You guys ever seen those... There's a culture. I don't know where they're at, but they would put brass rings. Yeah, on their and neck, they keep and stretch the stretch them out. The that was like na National Geographic. Yeah. I remember those That's pictures. It. I did it read that me one. out. Yeah. Did, yeah. The one yeah. thing we all the read. The one we were like, yeah, they were all on the same page. It came out at the same time. <laughs> that's that's yeah. because probably because there was nudity in like <laughs> yeah. page, yeah. page seventeen. There was some nudity. Like you get past the neck rings, you get down that's a little real, lower. That's it's like, truth. yeah, I probably didn't finish the whole article. <laughs> I can't tell you why they have the rings on their neck. It's a gold mine. Like Justin said, I remember seeing on National Geographic. There was probably tits on the next page. That's in Myanmar. That's really what Myanmar. Yeah, Myanmar. Uh, what is it, and what that's got to be the belief so... is the longer the neck, the more beautiful the woman. Oh. Now you know that their necks would get so stretched and weak that they had to always wear the rings forever. Of course, they'd flop yeah. over. If they took them off, they're like, Meh. yeah, oh weird. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, wild. that's such a gross. It's weird. And then there's the culture that. Yeah, I don't but know. what do you see today that will. Uh, there's got to be something. What do you mean? That, what do you see today? Think uh, about it. We got we all got kinds of weird earlobes that are like way out to here with holes. Even stuff know. that's accepted. Think yeah. about uh, breast We got Lizard Man, dude. Well, Have you guys seen that guy? Yeah, that guy's weird, dude. But uh, think about the accepted stuff, right? No, I mean more like like uh, social. Oh, like social. Like, like desire. Yeah. Yeah. Like people aren't walking around like that going, like, I want to do that, you know? But people are doing ass implants and butt implants. So that's true. And uh, boob implants. And yeah. Calf implants. And facial changes well, yeah. this, this this weird like i just went through a windstorm plastic surgery face overhaul so i guess you're right so is, there, i mean if you were someone you know yeah there's a lot 500 years from the future and you went back you dropped well, think about it if, if you go back 500 years and, and somebody comes or someone from the past comes to the future and then they see like 60 year old beverly hills whatever with like perky ass boobs they're like what the fuck <laughs> Is going Nine year old on. ladies just yeah, this is weird. Yeah. They'd be like, why does that young woman have an old face or whatever? You know, it'd be really strange. And you don't think mm. they would go like, oh, wow, they figured that out. Yeah, they figured out how to <laughs> yeah. not make my boobs. They age. hacked like, the, the age problem. Right? You don't think it's like that? I mean, I guess you don't go back and you go like, oh, that's brilliant. They figured out how to elongate the neck by two feet. No, no, no I don't mm. think so. And by the way, did you know that bras? Uh, it, that if you wear bras all the time, it actually causes the muscles that support the yeah. boobs to atrophy and boobs sag more. Yeah. Wow. So going braless is better for perkiness in the boob area. Burn the bras, ladies. Is, that's that's yeah. true. I actually read that. I thought there was a certain amount. I don't think I don't think it's all the time. Because I mean? think I think all the time isn't great either. For what? Keeping mm. a perky. 
Huh? Yeah. Well, let's see the article you're talking about. Do you remember what it said? Exactly yeah, what it said? Yeah, because at some point, they you, you think no, br no bra all the time is going to help them. Well, I'm sure if you're running or doing something like that. Yeah, there's, I, remember there's, oh, I, re yeah. I remember reading something similar to that, that yeah. there's benefits to not wearing Jumping it, but ropes I don't think it was like, never wear it. Yeah. It's the same reason why- Because uh, you would think the weight of it would pull down and yeah, make, you're it, right. and yeah, make yeah. it like all the time would also make it kind of sag too. Well, not just sag, you'd probably injure yourself well, yeah. if you're trying to move yeah, real quick. So I think, I think I read the same thing you did a long time ago because that's been around for a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and there's a lot of things, Justin. <laughs> also, I mean, you know, in, 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 in most problem. cultures, especially modern hunter-gatherers, the men will always uh, support their, their junk. And, I th and again, is that why you put a sock in there? No, I don't. Really? <laughs> that's not a that's sock. Just for aesthetics. Yeah. <laughs> that's the real deal. Uh, no, this they is like push ups yeah, before the podcast. No, yeah. they 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 would do it because of running. I know what and I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> He's this guy that would exaggerate it way too much too. Yeah. It's like, bro, you could have rolled some ankle socks in there, and it, <laughs> uh, might, yeah, have right. been, and it might have been realistic. Instead, yeah. he's got. I have a funny story about this. Knee high actually, socks oh, in there yeah. rolled up. Yeah. Yeah. Wool, yeah. wool, wool uh, snow socks, dude. Yeah. So our our wrestling team, like, and this was kind of it's it was funny because a lot of these guys are my friends that play football with me and everything, but they actually went out for wrestling. I never wanted to go out because of the unitards that they wear, right? <laughs> and so they're wearing these things, these singlets. And we go out to like a, a rally for for the school, like assembly. And so we're all sitting there watching. They come out and they all like just like had socks taped on the inside like oh, this wow. and did a whole WWF thing. But like it was so bad, oh, was, dude. They yeah, got was, so much trouble. It was hilarious. Wow, you can't do that anymore. No. Like, yeah, exactly. We're all bad about it. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it was almost like, you know, those 80s movies, like Porky's or whatever. Like, it yeah. was like we were doing stuff like that yeah, back in the no, day. Yeah, it, it was not good. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, you can't be walking out with fake did stuff. Did you, uh, what was that? I saw this article False pop up, and I thought I heard you talking about it, Sal, but I didn't, I didn't get a chance to read it, but I saw it pop up. I got tagged on a bunch of it, and it was during the Olympics. Uh, I don't know what sport it was. Uh, and the picture was two girls on the podium that looked like they were crying, and then one girl that was turned with her back to the yeah. podium. Yeah. That was, uh, and then the, uh, I forget what it was. So her name what, is Gwen Berry. protesting? Obviously, she's protesting. Yeah, so I'm going to look it up. I'll look up an article so we can kind of read about it a little bit. Um, but she's an American track and field athlete, um, and she specializes in a hammer throw. And I guess when the she got third place, I believe, in, uh, in a particular competition, uh -huh. and she turned away from the American flag during the national anthem in protest of... You know, saying that this that uh, that we're not, uh, you know, equality isn't good in this country. It was a, so. Here she says, uh, and and she supports a, a company called Color of Change, which is uh, unapologetic unapologetically in favor of defunding the police. So she's saying, basically protesting. So now, what are you guys' thoughts on that? Like you're in the Olympics, you're representing America, you win, you get on the podium, they play the America the national anthem, and you turn around. And essentially, some people would say disrespect well, it's the, the national anthem or the American flag. The epitome of how divisive we've all become. Mm. It's just that that's a, a clear example of a sort of where we're at. I mean, it's, country. it's it's sad and unfortunate, in my opinion, but it's also what makes America beautiful. Oh, is the yeah. fact that you yes, I agree. You can work your ass off so hard, and you can put yourself in a position where you get national attention, <laughs> and you can become one of the best, and you get to stand on a podium, and you could have very strong political beliefs that may not align with right. the majority or people, and you have an opportunity to make your point. I agree. Now, uh, I think it's a. I don't think it's a good point. I think defunding the police is uh, stupid. Oh my god! Yeah. Have you but seen the that results? Doesn't mean of that? that I also oh, don't yeah. think that I don't support the idea that. Well, you know, it's your podium. You earned it. You got. It. You worked your ass off to get there. And, well, it, and also, there's no fear of like going back home and getting iced. You that's know, right. just like other countries that would would get really offended and by also, that. Their leaders and, would just. And I don't feel. I also don't feel sorry for her for what she's probably going to get as a backlash from that. I mean, you get that. That's part of the. That's part of the freedom. Yeah, there, you know, it's, there, part, it's part of the part of. There the, are consequences, the, yeah. right? To to speech in the sense that you could piss someone off. You could say something mean. People aren't going to like you. Whatever. But you're right. This country represents uh, yeah. freedom, and freedom of speech, by the way, is more protected here than anywhere else in the yeah. world. Yeah. Everybody thinks Canada is like the same. It not at all. Not. Not true. Yeah. Uh, in fact, they they criminalize certain types of speech. Well, that's freedom how, the, of that's how the whole Jordan Peterson thing. That's how he went viral. Yeah, it was Bill C. Something bad. But here, here we're pretty supportive of free speech, and here's the deal: free speech 
exists specifically to protect unpopular speech. You don't need exactly. You don't need to protect popular speech. And what's unpopular speech? It's it, it could be something that's justified. Sometimes it's something that's bad. In the past, it was anything against the government, right? And the government could pass a law, or they couldn't pass a law banning you from from criticizing the government. Yeah, I certainly don't want them making the decision. Yeah, I so. think I think. Look, I don't I don't agree with her stance. I don't think defunding the police is smart at all. I think no, it's stupid. stupid. No, it's I think stupid. if you just look at the numbers, every time they do that, it's worse for everybody, especially the minorities, especially people yeah, uh, or, who are disenfranchised or in in poor neighborhoods. They get hurt the most by stuff like that. Um, I also think it's. It's it's interesting to say how bad of a country we are when we're in many cases. If you're anybody other than the majority, your odds of success here are higher than anywhere else. We have the wealthiest minorities in the world um, in any category um, and su most successful in almost any category. So, what is the stat on that? Do you remember? I don't know if you talked about it on the podcast. Maybe Doug, you can uh, uh, look that up because um, I, I forget. But like, I, I mean. A Caucasian person is not even in the top five. I don't no, know. No, those are, I know Asian Americans actually outperform. I know they do. Yeah, so, uh, Americans. so to, uh, uh, Indian American. I also uh, there's quite a few that are above. Yep. And so this this idea of this this white privilege always being talked about in our country, which not saying that it doesn't exist, it's that it doesn't look to me like it's that it's all skewed in that direction. No. There are, there are certain people that absolutely are are benefiting the other oh, direction. Oh yeah, no, no. Like like you said, Asian Americans uh, do very well. Um, they have low incarceration rates, very high uh, rates of uh, of wealth and success, um, low divorce rates, which is probably one of the reasons why the kids do so well. They're very low single parent um, you know, rates, lower than anybody else. But nonetheless, look, I might not agree with someone's statement, but I it, it, it represents our freedom yeah. exceptionally. So you have the freedom to stand up there yeah. and we're America. Look, if it was another country- oh, It's a beautiful if, thing to, to be able to yes. yeah, have that Could, and protect that. because But you have to challenge yourself with that though. That's the big thing. If it's speech that you don't agree with, you don't like, it still has to exist. Yep. That's, that's what we all yep. have to agree upon. Yep. Could you imagine what would happen if a Chinese athlete did that? during the Chinese national anthem. If they won oh, yeah. and they, they would disappear. Yeah, they're they gone. Would, they would be gone. That's what I'm trying to say. It's, you know, it's, it's funny. scary. I got in a debate online with someone who was talking about how great uh, it is to live in China. And so I know uh, the laws and what it's like over there. By the way, uh, if you see the people protesting in Hong Kong, it's because they know what freedom tastes like. Yeah. And they don't want to go yeah. in the opposite direction. Nonetheless, I talked to this, this guy who was going back and forth and debating me. And so I said, hey, what do you think about what happened in Tiananmen Square? And in, in crickets, you can't even mention it. And I knew he couldn't mention it because I knew the second he mentioned it, he put himself at risk for getting in big trouble. Uh. So it's like, yeah, right, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Great place. You can't yeah. say whatever you want. Wow. So yeah, I, I defend that always, even what, if I what, disagree I, with I don't him. know anything about that. That was a huge protest. It's the famous picture of the guy standing with the briefcase and stood in front of the tank. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was a massacre and people yeah. died or whatever. You can't mention it. Uh, on social media over there. You can't bring it up over there. It is uh, a crime. You can't even bring it up. You'll get silenced. Yeah. They wow. scrub their media, uh, their social media and everything. Oh, that's that, interesting. Really? Over that stuff. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's yeah, wild. Yeah, yeah. Really, really yeah. Uh, that's not- That's big, big, big government. Yeah, not good stuff. So anyway, I want to go move over to fitness a little bit. Do you know what's really good to take with creatine? So you know how for a long time, I don't know if I said this on the podcast. I know I was talking to Doug about this. So creatine, obviously our favorite supplement, just all around, um, aside from nutrients that you may be lacking that you yeah. supplement with. There's just new benefits we're constantly finding. Oh yeah. That. I told yeah. you guys that my dad started taking it for arthritis. So I'll yeah. give you guys, right. I'll let you guys another know. crazy fact. Yeah. I'll let you guys know what his uh, results are with that. But you know how they used to say, take creatine with dextrose, spikes the insulin, yep. and, and increases creatine absorption. That's why Celtec was so good. So everybody loves Celtec. <laughs> 75 so grams of sugar. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Give me diabetes. Um, so you don't need to use dextrose. There's something that's almost as effective that has no calories, sodium. So oh, really? You take creatine with sodium. Is it supposed to work as well as sugar? Very effective. Wow. So sodium and creatine are transported, I believe, by a similar mechanism. So sodium increases the absorption. So what I now you stack the LMNT with hundred percent. Oh. So post workout, uh, you drink something Dang. like LMNT, which is high in so it's, it's electrolyte high in sodium. Combining that at some point, yeah. Yeah. or if you don't want to do that, get just throw some some you know pink uh, Himalayan salt or sea salt or whatever uh -huh. in your water, mix it up with your creatine, take a post workout, 
it'll increase its absorption. And it's significant. I don't remember the number was, mm-hmm. uh, but it's pretty significant oh, in wow. terms of its uh, absorption. Oh, wow. That's right? really and no And no sugar, right? No calories. Yeah. No, that and, makes me want to want to see if we can work something out with them. Yeah. That would be really cool to yeah. create something, like you said, that we, it just combined. Yeah. Are oh, you yeah. guys consistent with creatine now? Or I haven't been for a long time. I've actually been trying to get back on it. But, uh, yeah, when I was on it, um, it was substantially different. My last, like, two reps, like, I would always notice that I could pump those out so much yeah. easier. Yeah. It was crazy. I, I was, was good just up a strength about a week boost. Ago. I, I was. It, it's when I'm when I'm at the gym and I'm working because I have the creatine all there. Mm-hmm. So I'm good when I'm working out. You know, I left some here. Here? Yeah, there's a whole bag of it. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, that. It's the white powder. It's great it's, to it's, <laughs> Oh, I I wrote, <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So what am I, this is terrible, man. Wow, this, is, this is a whole lot. Steel. Why is this, <laughs> this isn't working? This, this party this sucks. This got to be expensive. This burns. Why is this burn so much? Oh, no, geez. No, I bought a whole bag of creatine. I have it in the. I always I bring supplements here all the time. Oh, that's yeah. good. We're that's, stock, bro. Just everywhere you go, you just got to leave that, traces. Who, who do you think brings all the Organifi? That's why we have all the the green juice and the immune. Oh, I was wondering who keeps replacing that. Yeah, we love. I mean, I love having that for when we're up here because I don't get as much vegetables when I'm up here. Really? So, no, that's yeah, good. Yeah. You're better than me, dude. I'm the one that brings the new thing of whiskey every time. Yeah. So, so you are, are now you guys are making dinner tonight for everybody. We are, are you yes. throwing in vegetables on top of that too? So yeah, we'll, we'll do some vegetables. Um, I think we're either doing broccoli or um, uh, peppers. I'm, I'm, I don't remember which one, but then I'm going to be doing He's the doing steaks. <laughs> I'm so not doing, doing that meat, part. Bro. She's you doing the right she's doing the potatoes and the veggies. So You're fumbling around. He's like, uh, 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 just say your fucking. She wife told is me, bro. but I don't. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Um, <laughs> but I am doing the coffee rub uh, steaks. So yes. you guys will finally get to try that out. Yes, uh, yes. No, I brought the organ the green juice specifically because of that. Because when we come up here, we tend to just be like yeah. steaks. No, no, that's a, totally, all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, I need. I some. think I drink it up here more now. Like right, uh, I think I drink it here here the most or. Traveling, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like when I like to, I like to fly with it, keep it in my bag. It's really easy. All right, so I got some more controversial stuff for you guys. So there was this, this report. I'm going to read it from the UN about climate change, and they're talking about how we're so we far go. gone that shit's going to get real bad. This is the report from the UN, right? And now here's what it says. And then I'm talking gonna, to Greta Thunberg. Is yeah, that, <laughs> stop. Okay. And then here's going to be here's my here's I'll give you my opinion afterwards. So. It says here that this this report suggests that the wheels of climate-related devastation have already been set in motion. To slow them down, so this is what they're saying now, in order to slow down this, cli- this issue with climate, the entire world would need to take aggressive and immediate action on all fronts. Otherwise, we're going to pass a point of no return. So here's my... Here's my whole. Uh, I heard we already Why is everything so that. intense right now? Yeah. What? <laughs> like, can you just let us chill? Yeah. Like, we just went through yeah. a bunch of crazy shit. Like, and now, we, oh, now the next new thing is we're all gonna die remember, for climate. Remember the guy that we hung out with that we were that when we were first looking at up here the very first time when we were first shopping up uh, for places up here, and he was the VR. He was he was renting his place. Out. He rented his place to us for to stay yeah, at. What was his? Yeah. I forgot what his title or what he did for work. But you remember what, how how he felt about it? it? Was just like, yeah, we're done. Like he was so convinced. Oh yeah, he oh, was yeah. so convinced by all his research and what he was involved in that it's there's no, we're way past no return. Well, so here's so you here, remember that you remember? I do. He was like, yeah. I was a smart guy too. I remember was, was that. A smart guy. I remember like some that weird too. Dude, that was just talking conspiracy. I remember that specifically uh-huh. because up until that point, it was a very fun, exciting conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, remember that? <laughs> we were all hitting it off, and then he got real dark, real fast. He's like, yeah, we're pretty yeah, much like, gonna we're die. Gonna die. We're it's probably gonna be like ten years ish. Like, yeah. Wait a second, you had this great job, you're doing all stuff like that, and now you're just kind of like. Do you know how around. big the world is? Like, you know, like yeah. is on, all that going to happen at yeah, once? Yeah, he crapped us all out. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Crap so here's my out. here's my opinion on this right here. So they're saying that we need to take aggressive and immediate action, but the problem with that is, in the world, you have m- billions of people that are very vulnerable to potential. Because in the 20th century, we lifted billions of people out of poverty. A lot of people don't know about this. A tremendous progress that we did, taking people from grinding poverty to where they're dying of things like dysentery and starvation and now we lifted them out and but they're on the edge still right we make these massive changes these economic changes and these changes in production and transportation we will we will hurt billions of people in yeah. very very bad why do ways why they keep trying to cripple our economy well, and that's like, th- we're just starting to rebuild it like what, why are you adding also well extra that's what stuff? I, that's what i'm saying it's yeah. like it's this is not as easy as just change everything cuz everything has a consequence and if we do that 
we're going to kill a lot of people. And if we don't, maybe people will die. It's very complicated. So I have a, I have people a, pretend like it's not. It's I very complicated. Really yeah, stupid dude. question, but I don't know the answer to it. So I want to hear, um, you know, how the, they've along the lines of climate change. Uh, I know that uh, cow farts, right. Have been blamed for quite yeah. a bit of this. Right. So what is so different about cow farts than human farts? Mm. Ooh. I got serious. a fun fact lot, about that. Actually. I think they're a lot bigger. You know that the average no, person really. farts enough to fill up a balloon. This is why like I'm a asking. party balloon. This is why I'm asking. <laughs> I'm serious? Why, that's why I'm asking That's a truth. You. That's so a true if, stat. There's, there, there, I, there's a whole lot more of us than there are cows in the world. So, and I'm, I, you know, I've, I've been around some people that by, fart a I don't lot, think we bro. produce as, as much methane. Right? By the, that's, by that's, the, I, well, I'm assuming that. That's why I'm asking, though. By okay. the way, by the way. When you guys eat lots of plant-based foods, do you fart more or less? Oh, more. Every Way time. more. Yeah. Because of sulfur, right? That's why eating lots of vegetables and plants is bad for the environment. It is. Oh, oh, right oh wow. Eat man. meat. Oh, it's good wow. for the environment. Vegan's just head just off. exploded. Otherwise, your farts will- You just pissed off. Doug, can you, do you have the answer for me on that? Well, here's what I'm going to say about cows and humans. We can wipe out all the cows and nobody bat an eye. We wipe out all the humans, then we have. A I know, but I'm just saying, though, if we're going to make, you're going to make a huge case about the cows, and we're not even going to say anything about how much damage the the humans are potentially doing. Well, what do we do about the humans? Yeah. Well, okay. Can get rid of them? Well, yeah. Possibly. Put it, Bill Gates yeah. has an answer. The ones, yeah. If you, yeah. you, you, <laughs> if you <laughs> fart more than five times a day, there should be a limit. I think so. I, limit. I agree with that. Yeah. You get taxed. Yeah. It's Every, even it's been it's, debunked hey, anyways. Though. I mean, the shit. whole cow fart See, thing. Okay, so listen to how many cows there are in the world. Nine hundred eighty-nine million. Doesn't even come close to the number of humans. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but each so cow's it, fart is worth how listen, many humans' farts? Well, that's a good question. Where are the studies that show, like, when you plant a tree, like, how much that, like, then takes on a lot of the carbon and puts tree. out, like yeah, it puts out oxygen in replacement of it. Like, literally, if we planted more trees, had more forests, like, it would it would take out. No. bro. Dude, there's, there's nuclear, a lot of progress we could make just from that. Nuclear power. Well, that's well, yeah, nuclear, of course, power, nuclear power. Thing. Hey, plenty of plenty of trees. It's is crazy, man. simple. <laughs> it's <laughs> a simple, <laughs> actionable thing well, instead of well, just bitching about it. How much does a tree counter, or how much does it counter, like someone's carbon footprint? So, how much do you know? I'm I like know. I guarantee. We don't, again, we don't have a screen One in here. Tree, I'm yeah, not prepared many, for this Doug, conversation. You need to be better at this. How many trees? How many farts equals a tree? <laughs> <laughs> that Sorry, is I'm a just, great thing to know. Still trying to figure out how many. Oh my god, I might have to look this up. We gotta help Doug out. You imagine they start taxing farts. You're allowed two a day. Yeah. After that, it's a, it's a dollar. It's a dollar. Yeah. Adam's like, I'm broke. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. do I do? That's hilarious. Well, I did find out that humans are reported to emit about one liter per day of flatulent gases. One about liter? One percent of our body volume. Oh, my God. That's interesting. It sounds like a lot to me. It's a lot, but we weigh a lot less than a cow, so. Yeah. That's, that's true. Cows Anyways. are pretty big. You ever seen one? Oh, yeah, you milked them. I have. And, I, and that's why I'm trying to remember like all the, the all the cow farts. I've been when you around. milk cows. Do they fart? No, not that. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, as you that's, milk actually, them? that's actually not a bad question. They fart right they on do, you? They do. They do, yeah. Does it hit you right Especially in the face? Especially if they don't Okay, feel here we go. Shit on for, Trees right? help reduce <laughs> yeah. the effects of climate change. During one year, a mature tree will absorb more than 48 pounds of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and release oxygen in exchange. Plant a tree! Damn. Save 48, the world. 48 pounds? <laughs> yeah, but how many? What is I, that? I don't know. I, don't I just know, wanted to. Well, hold on I want to pretend like that was a powerful fact. By how many liters? A human does one liter a day? Yeah, one liter a day. Uh, I don't know. But how many gotta, liters are in a pound? Uh, pff, come on, dude. This is <laughs> gas, you do math? by the way. Hold on a second. Yeah. Okay. But, we got we to back up for a second. Adam yeah. said something very interesting okay. uh, that we need to not skirt by. Okay, let's listen You've been shit on by a cow? Yeah, haven't wow. I told this story? No. Uh, like, were your, was your hand in there? No, no, no. Like, my whole face area. I've told, what? Yeah. On your face? Oh. So, okay, so I used to. So you milk the cows at uh, twice a day, and, wow. you, and you milk about the same time. So if you milk at uh, 3 in the morning, you milk at 3 in the afternoon. So those are the two shifts. So I used to run half the week, uh, the, the morning shifts, the other half the evening shifts. And the morning shifts, you know, I'm strolling in, like, you know, eyes barely open. It's 3.30 in the morning, like, you know, drinking a cup of coffee. It's pitch black out there and some of that, switching everything on and going. And so I, half, half my job, I'm like asleep doing this. And it's like this repetitive motion of pushing the cows through. And this cow came around one time. And the way you do this, so if you can imagine uh, the stall that they come in, their food's right here. They're, uh, it's elevated, right? So it's elevated like this. So I'm standing uh, their their udders eye level to me. And their butthole's right above you. Well, then, the, you know, then their butt's over here, but it's facing the other direction. Oh, okay. But- uh, they eat a bunch of grain and stuff with you. And sometimes they're sick and they have diarrhea and they have issues like that, oh. right? So I had one that I didn't I didn't know it was sick until this happened, right? He uh. eats the grain. And as I let him out, I open it. And when he lets out, he goes and he turns. And when he turns, 
it then it's just, it's wait, just wait, a, no, you a mean sprinkler of yeah, sorry, brown. Did say him? Yeah, you did. Oh, then, then, you don't then, milk a bowl. Yeah, yeah, did, she, <laughs> did I really say her or them? Her, her. So as soon, yeah. as, as soon as she turns out, out the corner, yeah, her, her butt's pointed right at my face, and then she just... Oh, I mean, literally. Was it watery? Yeah. Wow. Oh, completely. Oh my god, drenched. So, how old were you? Because I, I, I'm gonna build I am, a theory I'm here. Seventeen, right? Okay. Now. Okay. So, do? so, okay. So, you guys know about the whole like imprint, you know, psychological oh, phenomenon. No. <laughs> like, did this <laughs> no. have any effect on you later on? Or? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, luckily, it exciting at all. Luckily, I, I had been already doing this for a few years, right? So, I started when I was 15, I think. So now, I'm, did you just go home? Like, what do you do? I no, I, I went up to the uh, I went up to the front. I had I knocked on the door and, and just covered in shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh like, my god. Knocked on the, the door to the the ranch the rancher's house, right, and said. Hey, I had to shut everything down. I, I mean, can you, can you hose me, bro? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you you have these huge coveralls, so thank God it wasn't like crazy. I mean, obviously, did you get in your mouth? No, I had my mouth closed. In your eyes? Uh, I closed my eyes fast enough. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, pink eye like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah so it wasn't like, but yeah, it was it was definitely up there, up there in those like weird memories. I got a lot of those with the with working out at the dairy. Man. Oh, yeah, you can. Uh, animals are unpredictable. So this is why this is why you're such a hard worker. You, you know, had to stick that out, dude. You know what's funny, and you know this too, because you you guys have both have done this. There is some, or at least maybe I had this one. First of all, one, um, and I don't know if it if it comes from my upbringing or just in I have it genetics with my whatever. But when I I have always viewed work, I have found a way to love what I do, no matter what I you do. You have to. Yeah. You, that's how I feel. Yeah. yeah. Like if I got to show up and do this thing, and I'm shoveling shit, yeah. I got to find a way to like well, it. It's or way else... worse when you have a bad attitude. Right. It just makes everything. Yeah, worse. And I connected those dots really early in life. Yeah. Because like, the mistake is trying to find something you love. That's right. All the time, rather than love what you've got. That's right. Yeah. And so I, I pieced that together at a really so all of my jobs I ever did and some shittier than others like really yeah uh, literally. they <laughs> literally yeah literally um, you know I, I always I always loved them I found ways to I, what I liked about that job and I focused What'd you like on about that. it. I mean, I love the fact that I get. To, I had this. It was all by myself, and I and it's super peaceful. Imagine at four o'clock in the morning, especially now that we're older and we we mm. enjoy being present and yeah. peaceful like that. And I'd have music playing. And it's just and it's dark outside, and the job is so like. You know, there's a skill to making it move and go flow fast, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And be able to get assistance. But it's somewhat down. predictable. Like you knew Super uh, predictable. how to get yeah, through Yeah, so I would totally, I'd be doing my job. I'd be able to kind of zone out and yeah. think about life. Yeah, and I like Other some stuff I want to do. Yeah, just, when I wash dishes, I do that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And so, I, I mean, I learned to like that, I should say. It was something that, yeah, that I was like, this is cool. And so, but then, yeah, every once in a while... You get shit on, or I know it's like get talking, kicked. You know, there's no like getting kicked in the chest son, by a cow. Oh, you got kicked in the chest. Oh yeah, absolutely. Sometimes you go to touch like Ouch. the udder, and they have like a blister, or they've been scabbed, or like another another cow stepped on their udder, and then so it's like sliced open. Oh. So they're super sensitive. Yeah, and you still got to go milk that shit. So imagine you go go I'm sticking my hands in there and that shit's hella sensitive. Yeah, Whash. yeah and they, they whip that leg out. So man, you get kicked a couple times. Damn. You know? Yeah. You that's, a, to, you know, that's a tough job, dude. Learn to get quick. There's no fast food restaurants or anything? Yeah. No, there is. That's what I so where I grew up, you had one or the other. You either worked at uh, there's a handful, there was Round Table, Burger King, Carl's Jr., McDonald's, all the all the major You made more money, let me guess. Um eventually I did. I made about the same. I started at I started at four dollars fifty cents was minimum wage when I started. And so, but I, I didn't want to work fast food. I didn't want my high school friends driving through drive through oh, and yeah. throwing shit at me and talking shit yeah. to me in my goofy ass hat. Yeah. Like I didn't, want, I didn't want that. I didn't I'd, want the attention. I'd rather either. be the dude out at four o'clock in the morning yeah. doing hard shit and sweating and being in the sun oh, and yeah. getting dirty and shit on. Like right. that was more appealing to me. Characteristics of a successful person. <laughs> yeah. I, don't I guess. I don't know. But that, I thought that's how I was. Like I did not oh, want that. When I, I had kid. a friend that worked at hot dog on a stick. <laughs> oh, and let me tell you. Yeah. Oh, brought him, do you remember that? When they had to bounce on the thing to make the What limit, a stupid uniform. And everything. Oh yeah. man, I would have caught dead in that. Oh, thing. bro, it's yeah. just like on um, what was that movie we were watching the other night? Uh, Don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. Oh, what a dumb movie! And the, too, do you remember yeah. that movie? Yeah, Christine Applegate. Awful. And that kid works at a uh, what was it? Clown World? No, yeah. Dog Clown. Dog, clown Dog. Clown Dog. Yeah. That looks like <laughs> Hot Dog on a Stick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same outfit. That's why I did not. I did not want that. Dude. Yeah. And for sure. And I, you know, of course, I was like, I thought it was cool. And yeah. so I was like, that was not cool. It was not yeah. cool to be like working at the fast food restaurant. And then so the other option was. 
ranches. I mean, there's lots of farms out there, and so you become a ranch hand for somebody. You learn yeah. how to. Oh yeah, I was like the construction whipping boy. Yeah. That's just I was just out there digging and 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 being under houses and getting hard to to reach stuff. Dude, and, I, oh man, I think every young man should work construction because you learn a lot. Like oh, uh, yeah. all the dirty jokes. The humility. I, oh, I did. I also forgot a lot, right? So I'm terrible. But it, it, it also it gave me an appreciation for anybody that does labor like that. Yep. Okay. So it, uh, it gave me that, right? And then it also told me that, I, you know, if I don't want to do this for the rest of my life, I better learn other skills mm -hmm. or yep. work my ass off to get better at something then, uh, or else I could be yeah. potentially Man, doing later something. provided that and for me and also like restaurants. Yeah. You know, I was like, I don't, oh, don't want to do this. No, forever. no, no, no. I just no, don't want to no. do this. Restaurants are no way. But dude. I feel like those two, I feel like everybody should have to work. Yes. You, you work in a restaurant, especially if you're a waiter or yeah. a busboy or whatever, you learn how to deal with people. Yeah. You have to. Yeah, and, every, and there's so many. Assholes. Well, look at there's look so at, many difficult people that demand the world from you, and it's like, wait a minute, you know, like, like honestly, you're out here, and I'm trying to make your experience better, but now well, you're at, hammering. Look, so, look me. at one of our favorite employees. I mean, that's what Jerry's background comes from. That one of the one of the attributes that everybody always says and loves about her is just like she's, she's on it. Yeah. This, you've got she's got that she's been she's she has been, the timing too she's been doing that for over a decade so yeah. she's yeah you gotta be fast dude. yeah she's my, about it my goal it. with every job was to be the best employee literally yeah. like yeah, if too. i worked there yeah, i was too. like i'm that's gonna a, be the best dishwasher there was, i'm gonna be the best that's right. there was literally there was like that's six it. of us that rotated through uh between <laughs> the owners and stuff like that with milking the cows and being able to do if you could get the most milk in the shortest amount of time you're the best like that and we tracked all that stuff so like being able to get them in, get them out, and get and and produce the most because you could always cheat the system and shortcut everybody, and then the, the milk isn't producing, which mm -hmm, that, yeah. then they get pissed, they lose their money. So can I get the cows to produce as, as much and as fast as possible, get them in and out, dude? Like and you were. I, which, I want I an '80s a, montage of Adam just milking cows. He's the best. <laughs> now what's ever gonna squirt some milk? Imagine, the, hey, imagine though you're an employer. I mean, you you love to get a 15 year old kid with me, like me, like that mindset, like competitive, oh, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. for to be fast. Hell yeah. <laughs> you get the job done earlier and he's only paying me six dollars an hour or whatever the time. He's like, like, I love this kid. Yeah, this kid. It's funny because I talk because my son's about he's about right now, he's about gonna start looking for a job pretty soon. And it's funny because I'm like, You should work over here. Oh, I don't want to work there. I'm like, man. Mm. I don't I didn't beat this yeah, kid enough. Selective working? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just you don't kidding. get a choice. But yeah, when I was a kid, it was like, that was it, dude. You get your job and you do your job. Yeah, what do you think he's gonna be like? Is he do you think he's gonna be like you when it comes because I feel like there's so many he's so like you. There's yeah. so many th uh, things that you guys He's are definitely so it's interesting. If it's something that he's into, I think he'll crush. But him and my daughter are very different. He he a lot of things come easy to him. And so sometimes he he'll skate because he can. My daughter is like I want to be the best no matter what, and she puts way too much pressure on herself. In fact, she just told me she wants to be a lawyer, and she's hardcore about it. And I said, why? She's like, because it's hard. I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> I kissed her. Like, oh. Oh, like, oh, that warms <laughs> my soul. My now, do you girl. think do you think he, your son is uh, more or less driven to be financially successful than you? you I was never driven by finances. So you think he's not at all either? I don't know. I, I, we'll see. Um, I, I was never driven by finances. I just loved to do, do a good job. I love to do really win. well, win. and win. I like to grow, yeah. right? But I, I was never driven by finances. I think maybe because I grew up uh, – we weren't like we weren't wealthy. We were middle class, um, but I never had issues with money, so it wasn't like something that I yeah. felt like I needed to go and get. I, but I liked working, and I liked doing a good job. I liked to do a really, really good job. Yeah. But money was like whatever. So, do you, you know? think he shares those attributes, or do you think he's I different think so? About it? I think so. Yeah, I definitely think so. You know what's interesting about him is he's really good at uh, like things that tend to be opposing. He's like really good at tech and art. Mm -hmm. So, like he'll his art. Uh, projects are incredible, and then he's really good at math and technology. So I don't know what that'll. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, what, what that'll it's like do. Both sides of the brain, right? That's one's left, one's that's what right. They say, mm -hmm. "Wow, yeah." I told him, "Like you're like Da Vinci." Like, oh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, dude. So we're supposed to talk about mirror, but and so I have something I want to bring up about the mirror cups. I left a mirror cup. I had filled it with water and ice for the drive up here. Yeah, left it in my car. You guys know it was it's hot. No, it's ninety three. In fact, if you're watching us on YouTube yesterday. right now, I'm not just like this is not my skin isn't just glistening. You know, what, <laughs> no, I'm just sweating. Like right me, now. I'm I'm just like draining of sweat. Right it now. is hot, right? So I had it out in the car in the heat yeah. all day long. Yeah. Oh, I forgot my cup. I go out there, open it. I it's think still it's cold. Gonna, 
cold. So awesome. Still mm. cold. Uh, like nothing. Did it, what was, okay, what, okay, you guys know, I have no idea the evolution of this. Like, you remember thermoses when you were a kid, which yeah. were pretty decent. Like, yeah. you had a thermos, probably every kid had a, a thermos in their lunch pail. Yeah. We keep foods hot or cold for, for a good portion of the day, but not at the level now. Where, what, what was it technology wise that they figured out between so, when we were kids and what the insulation? So if you create, if you create, uh, so you, you have two walls, right? Separated by oxygen or air. That doesn't transfer uh, energy very well, heat or cold. So whatever's on the inside isn't going to cool down or heat up um, as fast as it would if there was no air in between those two walls. Then what they started doing is they started to vacuum. I think they started to vacuum the oxygen out or something like that. So there's a vacuum in between the two walls, and that made it even more effective. Mm. I think. Doug, am I correct? Is this right? That sounds good. Okay. <laughs> it sounds good. <laughs> sounds good. Hey, it always sounds good when he's delivering it. As long as it sounds, sounds good. Who knows if it's accurate? Hey, don't. Oh, sounds man. science-y. Someone's gonna, just... Someone will correct me in the day. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> sure. Yeah, there's got to be. I bet you we do. Through this the is process of podcast. osmosis. We are now at a place now, which I do. And I appreciate it, by the way, especially when you guys approach it uh, professionally. Nicefully. Yeah, nice. That's the word I was looking for. Nicefully. <laughs> nice nicefully do it. I appreciate it. Nice yeah, because we never. there's always somebody who's an expert or in the field that we talk about I know, right? constantly being corrected. You know, yeah. Thank God we don't try and claim like we're experts in all no, these things. Not. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying this podcast. Head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all of our free guides. We help you on everything from building muscle, burning body fat, improving your health, even guides for personal trainers. So lots of free guides. They cost nothing. Mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. Our first caller is Maria from North Carolina. Hey, Maria, how can we help you? Hi guys, thanks so much for having me. So right now I train five days a week, uh, three by myself and then three with a trainer. Uh, so I am currently training um, weightlifting, Olympic lifting with him. But I want to um, do or follow uh, my own program, one of your programs actually. I'm trying to see if I can buy one of your programs uh, during my days off with my trainer. Um, but I don't know if that's gonna take away from my training with him, uh, with the Olympic lifting. I don't know, what are your thoughts? Okay, that's a good question. So now I don't know your trainer. Um, I'm gonna assume that they're doing a good job and no program that you'll find anywhere online is gonna be as good as a individualized personal trainer. So what I would do if I were you is I would follow the instruction of the trainer. Now, if you wanna add something to the training. I wouldn't add one of our workout programs. What I would add would be something that would focus on correctional exercise and mobility. So MAPS Prime Pro is something that can be added to any workout because it improves yeah. connection, it improves mobility, it improves your ability to move more effectively and efficiently so you get better results with the workouts that you do doing or that you are doing. But aside from that, I would focus on what your trainer wants you to do because I used to have clients that would do this sometimes. They would train with me and then they would go off and do other stuff, not knowing, not for any fault of their own, but not knowing that they were actually countering a lot of the work that we were doing together. Yeah, Maria, how, how mad would your trainer be that you're asking this yeah. question? Yeah. And does he listen Barry? to us? I yeah. hope he doesn't see this. I'm sure he would be. <laughs> this used to piss me off when clients did this, okay? Yeah. so And here's why. If he's a good trainer, which I hope he is because you hired him. Yeah, and, he's amazing. He's okay, very so, good. Okay, so if he's amazing then you probably don't need to add anything to your programming. And if you were going to do anything, it would be to address maybe some mobility stuff or priming like Sal's alluding to, which is that that's not a standalone program. That's that's designed to complement any program. So yeah. that, that makes sense. But as far as any other exercises, training wise, strength or anything, I mean, well, if he's done a good job, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be adding anything to it. It, it might be helpful too to, I mean, obviously to, to introduce them to the podcast, but also like we have a program like maps anywhere where it's something, if you're traveling uh, and you have limited options in terms of tools and things like that, that could make sense. And then he could be find a way to program that in with his program and he's already doing with you. Um, but yeah, you, you don't want to compete with what you already have going on. You want to kind of work together. So communication is one of those things that, uh, you know, is going to go a long way if you kind of tell him what you're thinking of and then he kind of goes through our stuff. Now, Maria, do you have maps prime pro? I don't know. Oh, okay. I want you to check in your right pocket right now. 
<laughs> we just who's under is the last person's chair. Yeah, now it's a, we just gave you Maps Prime Pro for free. <laughs> uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna send that over to you, so you'll have free access. Okay. Okay. Thank He's you. He's really guys. into magic. Yeah, yeah, no problem. It's, 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 yeah. Forgive him. It's that's, not in your pocket. Call our customer service. Yeah, that's so. the beauty of digital programs. Yeah, <laughs> they're everywhere. <laughs> thank you, Maria. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, um, I mean, here's the I would be so pissed. Here, look, here's the bottom line. <laughs> this okay. used to piss me off. As no, no, didn't this used to piss you off as a trainer? Oh, yeah, I, because I, they don't know, right? Dude, how many trainers have we pissed off? I mean, yeah. probably a million. But this yeah. is this is the problem: is that people don't know, right? That's why you hire someone; they're the expert, and you don't understand the intricacies of workout programming and what they're trying to accomplish with you. Yeah. And if they're good, they're doing a great job. And here's the deal: this is the bottom line. The three of us. We trained people for decades. This is what we did. And uh, we know the value of a really good personal trainer. There isn't a workout program in the world that's made for masses of people that yeah. will ever compete I to just, an individualized I workout. I just find this so interesting, though. Like, what any other profession that you hire to, to handle a part of your life, say a financial advisor or- you I know. bet financial advisors hate well, this, too. Well, yeah, I'm sure yeah. they get this a lot. Oh, right? I, bet, I mean, how pissed is hey, he? Hey, by the way, right? I, by the way I took 10 grand and bought Bitcoin. I, yeah. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> right, right. Like, I, listen to the radio. I, I just like, don't, I don't, I, if you if you hire somebody who's a, especially if someone, I'm assuming if this guy's teaching Olympic lifts, he probably knows. I mean, I don't even like to teach Olympic lifts because I don't think- Olympic per, lifting per, per trainers enough. tend to be really good. Yeah, I mean, and really good yeah. with, like, we've talked about programming. Like, right. so he probably has a vision in mind. I'm trying to get this girl really good at, you know, these lifts, right? right here and so anything she could do outside of that could totally fuck up that process so yeah. you know if i ever had remember the clients used to do this too used to piss me off like if i had I, they'd train with me and then i'd catch them in the gym like an hour later oh, or something doing more exercises and they'd be because like, they think it's like extra credit it's gonna do well better, or that yeah. or they because they didn't feel they didn't sore, enough. sore enough yeah they, they didn't, didn't get sore enough exactly. or sweat enough so they assume that they could have done more Dude. and it's like that's not good Super programming common. good programming isn't leave you crippled all the time or hurting or sore all the time good programming you should see progress and actually not feel all okay, that okay now shit. now be honest here because i know early versions of early trainers that we were there were definitely mistakes we made and there's a lot of ego when you're an early trainer did you guys ever get the client who always complained about not getting sore? So you said, all right. So yeah. one day you just blast them. I'll take you through a workout and show yeah. you how sore you can get. Yeah, I would do it as a teach a lesson, but yeah, they would never the be. Time. I would never fall prey to getting in or fall in that trap as a coach thinking that I, I need to compete with other coaches that are willing to get you sore. I'd explain to them, listen, if you just want to get sore, yeah. Go you don't need a trainer at all. You don't. You don't. Just go yeah. do, and don't do whatever. bang your head against the wall. You get really you sore. Do whatever you want. But yeah, a good... And a good program is taking into consideration your rest days and the other days. You start throwing things in there, and you you screw up a good program. So, yeah, I mean, I would I would say stick with what this guy's probably teaching you. Um, but then, absolutely, Prime, which I think is a great Prime or Prime Pro, which are assessment and mobility tools. You add to, that to anything? Yeah, it's designed to complement anybody's workout. Our next caller is Gunner from Washington. What's up, Gunner? How can we help you? How's it going? I had a hernia surgery about a year a year ago i was cleared to exercise um i've been exercising since i'm running anabolic right now and i plan to run aesthetic after that at both of those programs and squats and deadlifts are very prominent in that program and when i do those um i notice flare-ups like where i had that surgery at i'm kind of pretty itchy there for a couple of days um just kind of unnecessary pain in that area. Um, I think it's due to the big load, um, kind of with weight in those exercises. And I'm curious what you guys would recommend switching out for those two. Yeah. Okay. So you don't want to mess with hernia surgery. No, uh, if that no, happens, don't. yeah, that tears again. Uh, you're, it's going to be, I'm sure the recovery was probably a pain in the butt and it took a while. So that being said, we don't need to abandon the, exercise no, and, and I, you know, here's the deal. This is somewhere where I would, I would, if you were my client, I'd have you go back to the doctor and I would talk to them and get their clearance on what you can and can't do because you're feeling something post-exercise that tells me that either the way you're bracing or maybe even the way that the procedure was done to repair your hernia. Did they add any mesh material or did they just sew up uh, what was open? Yeah, they did add mesh. And when I exercise now, like I've been doing, and what I've been doing, I'm about halfway through anabolic. I've been doing Bulgarian split squats with like lighter weight and kind of doing time under tension. Um, and then I did like kettlebell Romanian deadlifts yesterday. 
Okay. And no pain. Yeah, good call. Yeah, good, yeah, yeah and yeah, I, I would good. go, again, check with your doctor because sometimes the itchiness is literally where the mesh attaches to the muscle. And it could be just uh, part of the healing process. Things are moving. Not necessarily a bad thing, but I'm not a doctor. And I would clear that with your doctor because right. if it tears again, the second time around is going to be worse than the first time around. This is not something you want to mess around with. So I'm with Sal. I'm, I, I Obviously, doctor stuff first. But then I also wouldn't abandon the movements. I would just lighten the load and, and slow down the tempo and really concentrate on bracing my core mm -hmm. and and keeping my spine nice and neutral through the movement and just master the technique of the movement and don't even though even if you're following something like anabolic which I know is a strength focused first phase uh, you know, w don't worry about always loading the bar more and more weight. Um, get more into perfecting the movement. I love your decision to go to the Bulgarian split squats. Yeah. I think that was a great. I think that's a great call. Um, but there's just so much value in in the squat and the deadlift, and we don't we don't want to because basically if we say you're going to move away from it now, are we just going to accept for the rest of your life you'll never be able to squat or deadlift again? It's like I don't think you you want that. I don't want that for you. And so um, you know, let's first get some clearance from the doctor to make sure we're all good to go. But then let's just start from the ground up and move real yeah, slow. Yeah, just keep that load way down until you know for sure. Like, it, you know, you can feel when it's healed up and things are sort of operating uh, back to, to normal. And so like the the Bulgarian split squats and like kind of doing the unilateral type training is going to benefit you quite a bit. You're still going to build muscle and you're still going to build a lot more stability and support for when you know you feel like you're you're now ready to then start stacking yeah. the load on so it's there's nothing wrong with you know staying in that type of mentality for a while yeah and you might be surprised like you might go to the doctor and the doctor might say oh well that's normal where we attached the mesh scar to the muscle tissue and stuff scar tissue is changing and growing and you know not growing excuse me stretching and that's just a normal process of you know your body adapting to this particular procedure so they might just say that to you so but nonetheless Get clearance. I've worked with people who've re-injured a hernia, and I'm going to tell you right now, you don't want to do that. Yeah, it's, it, it's not sure. worth it. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. No problem, Gunnar. Awesome. I know a guy that had he re kept re-injuring a hernia, and obviously your gut starts to poke through the yeah. hole, and he would push it back in with his hand. Anyway, it got so bad, it pinched off a piece of his, I guess, his intestine, intestine. which died. He had what? to go and get it removed. Yeah. Oh, hernias can be really bad yeah. they could be it's really really bad it's things serious yeah. yeah to the point where they can become almost life-threatening or you just keep re-injuring this area and then you're left with this kind of permanent issue and it's so. such a like a weak link right there like it's it's susceptible to i mean it's easily like torn once it's done at once mm -hmm. so it's like it's, it's just one of those things you want to make sure it's really healed up before you start adding the intensity back now given say the doctor does clear him and he's fine this is an example though of why i would not want to abandon those movements it's just and this is where you can play with things like tempo and isometrics like no i mean right. n nothing stops you from okay we, we he, obviously he does date normal movements getting up and out of a chair and stuff like that and so load the bar really really light and you know pause at the bottom and pause midway through the movement and grip the floor and then squeeze and contract at the end and you know slow it way down on the eccentric portion of the exercise so lots of different ways for you to play with it and then unilateral like justin was alluding to i mean do some single leg deadlifts yeah. and get really good at that and perfect the movement we're always so hung up on moving weight on the bar as our sign of we're getting better and stronger. It's like you absolutely do not always need to do that. And here's a perfect example of somebody who instead of us, because like, the natural thing that someone at 24 wants to do is go like, okay, should I just stop squatting? And then I go leg press really heavy, Yeah, yeah. you know, because I feel okay leg pressing. So let's go stack six By plates. the way, the leg press would be the worst possible. Well, thing I know. That's, that's even worse. But I mean, squat. that's how they would think though, right? right? I mean, that's a client with the, or go to some machine leg extension sure, and stack sure. the plate on there it's just like we want to just go heavy and do something that we feel safe or doing it's yeah. like no what you what we should do is just really lighten the load in those movements because you know being able to hinge at the hip you know and squat down uh parallel that's a, or that's below, a fundamental human a, movement yeah we don't at 24 mm -hmm. i don't want to give up on you having that our next caller is rebecca from texas hey rebecca how can we help you hi so um i graduated high school this year but i've struggled with like an eating disorder since i was like in seventh grade and at this point now i've been trying to like recover my period um 
And I started lifting and found Mind Pump, and that's kind of helped me through my recovery process. I do work with a dietitian and a therapist, but um, from consuming your videos and other content, I've realized that like chasing um, health and will help me in the long run. I've been doing MAPS Anabolic for like a while, and I had DM'd you, Sal, like a while ago after I started doing performance, and you had mentioned that doing um, MAPS Anabolic would be better for balancing my hormones, and so I went back to that, but I still really haven't seen any progress. Uh, I've been working on lowering my steps, so I was averaging about 25,000, a day ish and I've gotten down to 13,000 and I'm still trying to lower it from there but I was wondering if y'all had any suggestions if I should like cut down on exercises sets or like um I thought maybe going down to two days a week but like lifting has really helped me in my recovery process so I'm kind of like stuck on what to do yeah what, what are you doing mm. the the 25,000 steps are you just naturally getting that campus walking around campus or something what's that um, so I'm just naturally like, I like to move around a lot and also just being like anxious minded. Um, I do work with horses like five times a week, but that usually gets me like around 3000 steps. So, okay. First off, I want to commend you on your, your courage. It's really hard to talk about what you're talking about, especially on a, a podcast. Yeah, Self-awareness. And thing. yeah. And the fact that you're working with a dietitian and a therapist, you are on the right track. Now I know you're saying you're not seeing any progress. So I'm assuming you're talking about maybe physical progress or even just the progress with your period. But I'd like to ask you a couple other questions, Rebecca. Do you feel any different or has your relationship with your body and with exercise, has that changed? And do you feel any changes in your energy levels? Um, I have definitely felt better energy level wise. I know I should probably like increase the amount of food I intake, but like um, I'm still like struggling with the whole like guilt thing. But um, I was that person who used to do hit, but then it turned into more like while we, while I was resting, I was still like jogging in place. Mm. Um, and, um, I think my relationship with food has been a little bit better because now like y'all really encouraged me to like eat white rice because like I was afraid to do that. But then on the days I'd work out, I started consuming that because I was like, Oh, this would be like, a quick um absorbing carb or i can't think of the word but like before like a workout and stuff like that so yeah okay so you are progressing you are doing a great job yeah. and i want you to, to to understand a few things let's start with the physical okay let's just start with the physical body which is different from the emotional and mental side which is also something that you're working on because you have had a a, a challenging relationship with food for a while, it's going to take a little while for your body uh, to recognize what you're doing now as the new norm. Okay. So uh, th there's a bit of a memory that's left over. You just got to be patient and allow things to work um, and do it very slowly. But I want you to focus on how you feel, how you view yourself, um, your energy levels, and your relationship to exercise and to nutrition. If those are improving, you are on the right track. And I'm going to tell you something, and I promise this is going to happen, Rebecca. If you keep moving in that direction and just focus on those things I just said, the physical will follow. It's a matter of time before the physical follows. But I want you to take your focus off of the physical. I don't even want you to, to, to care about that. Care about the most important things for now. That will drive your physical success, believe it or not, more then if you focused on the physical progress, uh, you know, type of goals. I, I have two suggestions. Um, do you have do you have the ability to extend your workout time, like as far as how long you're in the gym with MAPS Anabolic, or do you have a, a small window to work out? Uh, right now that it's in the summer, it seems like I have like quite a bit of flexibility. So I don't know what it will be like once I get off to college, but... Uh, for right now, it seems like I have a pretty flexible schedule. Okay, so one of the things you, you, I would more than likely, uh, even if you are falling anabolic and if you have a tendency to 
you know, go fly through the workout like maps hit and then also work between sets. You probably even follow the the rest period times and maps anabolic really closely or keep it moving along. And I would actually push you in the other direction where I'd say, you know, let's let's have like some three minute rests yeah. in between mm -hmm. exercises and actually slow the the workout down where maybe it takes 90 minutes to get all the way through the full anabolic routine. And and that's what I would try and, and stretch that out. So that's one suggestion uh, that I, I would do with you. The other thing I would uh, see if you would be interested in and, and try and get you to do is maybe two two times a week, if I can get you starting there with uh, yoga, you know, where- you, Yin yoga. Yes, it's very meditative. You're not trying to, you're not sweating in Bikram. You're not pushing real hard. It's just really, I mean, if you say you're anxious, um, I just think, and we're also trying to cut back a little bit on the crazy steps all the time. I think doing something that's working inward more would be a, a really good idea. And sauna work would be fine too. So like, you know, I would, I would try and get you to, to schedule me two or three times a week where we're dedicating an hour to 90 minutes of something that's very slow, restorative. yeah, restorative and calming and, uh, introspective. So I think like the sauna or jacuzzi or some hot cold plunge stuff or uh, yoga, I think would be uh, great yeah. to add to what you're Yin doing. Yin yoga is a phenomenal recommendation. I can't recommend that enough for for, for you and it's going to be frustrating. So consider uh, this is for sure going to happen. You're going to go into a yin yoga class hmm. and you're going to be frustrated because it's you slow. You want to the power yoga y version. Yeah, and they're making you sick yeah. and, you're, and, you're, and you're stuck with your thoughts. But that's exactly why it's so yeah. beneficial. And then with the long rest periods in between sets, try something like this. Um, is there something you can do in that three minute period that's calming to you? So uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, Paul Check is a good friend of ours. He's a I consider him to be the godfather of wellness, and he would have people paint oh, or draw. It. We have yeah. a video on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. in between sets. Uh, so fascinating. Yeah, and and that's because it's a very calming kind of meditative practice. Find something like that for yourself. It might be reading. It might be writing in your journal, something that has nothing to do with the workout, something in between each set that is calming for you and focus on that. And I promise you, okay, I, 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 this is 100%. If you do these things and you focus on the mental and emotional aspects of your health and you do those things consistently, the physical will follow, I promise you. If you focus on the physical right now, Rebecca, and push the physical to try and get results, you're not going to get either one of those things. So just, and I know right now you're, you're listening to me and you're like, okay, I know Sal said it, but I need you to trust what I'm saying. Give it a shot. Give it six months. Give it six months and watch what happens. You will you will blow yourself away at your body's potential if you do this the Can right I way. Can I ask where we are calorie-wise right now? Where are we at calorie-wise? Um, I think I'm around uh, 2,500. My dietitian won't give me specifics, but like I, I am at like, she says that I'm at a healthy weight for like, she's actually kind of confused why I haven't gotten my period because she's like, you're at a good weight, but she thinks I might have like more muscle mass than I realize. But of course, I'm like, I'm not lifting like really heavy weight and like, I'm not super muscular. So uh, I have been doing anabolic. I'm actually in the strength phase right now. So would you say just keep doing the strength phase for like six months? No, or? I mean, I, I would go from phase one to phase two. You can still do phase three, but I would, you can go back and forth between yeah, phase I would, one and two. I would cycle through the whole program, right? Go one, two, three, start over one, two, three, follow, follow it the way it is. The only suggestion I would do as far as changing it would be, like I said, is to stretch out the rest periods. Yeah. And, and, and consider this, okay, when it comes to, I know you're waiting for your period, it, it will eventually, uh, it should eventually happen. That takes time sometimes. But it's not just the, again, it's not just the physical. So your thoughts are real to your body. Your feelings are real to your body. So although physically you might check all the boxes, if you're still in that anxious state of mind, your body might not feel ready That's just right. yet. That's so, why the yoga thing I think is going to be Yeah, just, just don't even, I would just slow down and do those uncomfortable. What's for you, uncomfortable is going to be sitting still with your thoughts. So focus on that, work on that. Yin yoga was such a great, a, a great recommendation. And by the way, and it, that was my recommendation, but I also, there's, uh, you know, to kind of Sal's point with the the art thing, I, I actually, as a, as a coach, if you were my client, uh, I wouldn't mind you picking something that actually doesn't require the gym or isn't considered an exercise. Like if you just paint it for an hour or two, like if you have, I would try and find something, a hobby 
that you become very present in the moment and into, and it relaxes you and it gives you fulfillment and joy. And that could be anything. It could be comic books. It could be fishing. It could be painting. It could be doing archery, knitting, archery. I mean, yeah, it could, there's mm. a whole host of things that I, I would like to see you do. And I, I would I would make you do that as a client. I would ske- make you schedule that in your week. And I just think that there'd be tremendous benefit from it. And yes, yoga is a, a good example. Now, Rebecca, I'm going to send you the intuitive nutrition guide for free. And I don't want it to, uh, it's not going to replace anything that you're doing with your dietitian. But there are lots of segments in there that focus on improving your relationship to nutrition that I think you may benefit from. In fact, uh, I'm only going to send it to you under one condition. I want you to promise me that you'll show your dietitian before you read it because I do want to make sure that I get their clearance first. Will you promise me that if I send it to you? Yeah. I've actually talked about y'all a lot to her and she gets really excited every time I tell her information about what you say. So cool. she'll be excited to see it. All right. So we'll send it over to you before you read it. Send it to your dietitian. Say, hey, you know, the guys at Mind Pump sent this to me, but they would like your approval before I go through it. Send it to that, her or him. Have them take a look at it. And then if they say it's all good, then then take a look. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks for calling, Rebecca. Oh, thank you. Oh, you know, stuff like that really warms me because oh, I, I, I've worked with people like this and especially at this age, really hard to come out of. Got to love though that at her age to have the awareness and, and for her to be already aware, reached out, have professionals that are helping her, yep. listening to Mind Pump at that. I mean, for sure, she represents a very small percentage. Of, we don't have a lot of people, you know, under the age of 20 listening. I mean, we're definitely... 25 and above for most mm-hmm. most people listening to the show. So I always get excited when I hear a younger person that's into the show and then someone who's been challenged as much as she has with like an eating disorder in seventh grade. Right. And that's, you know, to her period question, like, you know, even though she's got her nutritionist, knows she's got everything right. If she's been struggling with this in seventh grade, it takes a while sometimes. Mm-hmm. And to your point, she also still could be causing internal stress because she's still anxious and she's still worried, yes. and she's, mm-hmm. which I, I love the idea. And it doesn't have to be yoga, although I think I, yoga was a, a good recommendation. It could be anything that just relaxes her and calms her down. Yeah, and, and it is um, it, it is a very big deal uh, what she's doing. So I, I hope she listens to this, this podcast and, and what we're saying afterwards because stick to it. You're doing the right thing. And on the other end of this is tremendous personal growth. In fact, the best coaches and trainers I've ever worked with in my entire life, the ones that I learned from started here. They started here, they got through it. And on the other end of it, they became tremendously effective at their jobs because they understood things from an angle that most of us will never get to. Our next caller is Andrew from New York. What's up, Andrew? How can we help you? Hey guys, thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. Um, so basically my, my question is I work a job where I work four doubles in a row, uh, 3 PM to 7 AM, 16 hour shifts. And then I have eight days off in a row. Um, right now I have still been going to the gym in between my doubles because I feel I feel like taking four days off in a row is a little bit awkward. Um, so I, I was wondering if it would be beneficial on the four days where I'm doing doubles to still go to the gym and do maybe like a lighter workout or if it would be more beneficial as far as getting a couple extra hours of sleep in between doubles and skipping four days off in a row completely. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with taking 40 days off a, 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 in a week um, not a, not a, or in a row. Not a big deal. In fact, because of the hours that you're working, it's better to do that than it is to work out. But I will say this. You start at 3 p.m. you said. I would try to do some kind of outdoor walking where you get sunlight exposure earlier in the day. You're going to need that to help with your circadian rhythm because that's really what's getting hammered with this kind of schedule. But I wouldn't do any workouts on those days. I would really focus all your attention on getting good sleep because I don't know if you've seen the statistics on the health effects of those types of shifts that they have on the body. I mean, it's, it's pretty bad. It's like smoking cigarettes every single day. Throwing more stress on top of that with exercise isn't going to get you better progress. So get some sun exposure, you know, do some walking, leave the workouts for the eight days off in a row that you have when you can get better sleep. You are know, you active that whole time in your job? Like, are you moving around quite a bit? Um, no, it's actually a pretty sedentary job. Um, for the most part, uh, I'm in corrections, state corrections. Mm. So I, I, you know, on top of the 16 hour shifts, it's also, it, it might not always be physically taxing, but at least like from the mental aspect, like 
you're always on edge. So. Right. And I mean, is there like limited options in terms of like you being able to get up and move or like, you know, kind of break that up in, in chunks throughout your day, just doing like basic, you know, movements and walks and, and squats or something that you could do in terms of like, you know, around your desk. Yeah. So, I mean, for all 16 hours, I have to get up once every half an hour and do around wherever I am. So like, it's not like I'm just sitting for 16 hours. I have the freedom pretty much whenever I want to get up and walk around, do whatever. Oh, I, I, I'm, I have a couple things. So the one, I think I wouldn't worry about taking the days off. And uh, I don't know. Did you hear Andrew, the episode where I, I referenced the study that uh, Lane Norton posted about, about a month ago? Do you, did you hear that episode? Yeah, because I, I follow Lane as well, um, and I, I think it was a couple weeks ago that uh, they did, I think it was like a month long study or something like that, it, where they the it, two different groups, and there wasn't really much difference at all. That's right. The, there wasn't at all. In fact, the, the, I, I believe if anything, the the group that took the week off every three weeks uh, was as good or superior at the end of the. I think it was a sixteen week study. And you had a group, one group that every, they trained consistently three weeks and they took a whole week off, then three weeks consistently the whole week off compared to a group who never took any time off, trained consistent the entire time. Equivalent results. At the yeah. End. At the, so, uh, the, and that high, highlights just the taking seven days off in a row does not set you as far back as you would think. And that's not taking into consideration your job. So your job that you have, that you're working 16 hours it, it those days off are even more beneficial for you because of the points the guys are bringing up with stress. Yeah, and and again to kind of counter some of these postural positions, like that's why I was trying to get out. If you have opportunities to get up and do some mobility drills or do things where you're addressing uh, those forward shoulder, the the, the forward neck, um, it, you know, to be able to get your spine in good alignment and just get up against the wall, do a wall test, you know practicing those things, making ritual out of it will help to benefit you uh, going back into your workouts the next week. So that I was, that's where the other point that I was going to make was, I don't know if you have the flexibility for like an hour lunch or whatever, but, um, and if you have somewhere at work where you could hook up like a suspension trainer, I would totally, if you're a client oh, of yeah. mine, I would totally let you do one to two days during your work shifts for a 20 minute, 30 minute, you know, suspension trainer type of workout. And I would, I'd probably, I'd probably modify it and gear it around posture stuff. So I'd be doing like W's and maybe some rotational exercises in there, but uh, a suspension trainer, 20, 30 minutes, two of the days of the days that you're working the four days. Mm -hmm. And then the most of your like heavy weight yeah. training Just stuff. Just keep going sending on. a signal to, uh, you know, keep building muscle. Yeah. But I honestly, if you focus on sleep and uh, during that time, that'll yeah. give you the biggest That's benefit. The biggest. So, you know, Agreed. like I said, get sunlight. Uh, before you go to work, make sure you get some good sun exposure. And then two hours before, because I'm assuming you go to bed when you get home and get some sleep, I would two hours before your shift ends, put on some blue light blocking glasses, get your brain kind of ready, and then make sure your room where you go to sleep is cool and blacked out uh, so that you can get some good rest. Because I'm telling you, if you look at the studies on the effects that these types of shifts have on people's bodies... Yeah. It's, it can be very detrimental. Very so I, I'm very cautious to throw any more stress at your body during these periods of time. Yeah, because I, I know you had mentioned earlier and about the circadian rhythm. That's another thing that's hard about it too because I go from the four days of doing overnight shifts and then I have eight days off. So like the first couple of days where I'm trying to transition back to going to bed at like 10, 11 o'clock at night, like I barely get any sleep on those nights because it's going back and forth yeah. all the time. Yeah. yeah. Focus on sleep. Get that Brutal. sunlight during the day. Wear those blue light blocking glasses. That's going to give you the biggest impact. Okay. Thanks a lot. No problem, man. All right. I definitely, I, I definitely agree. We're all on the same page that. Well, dude, he's not only he's not only doing those shifts. Did you hear what he said? He tries to go back. He, he's literally jet lagging himself every yeah, week. Yeah, I know. I mean, that is he, that he, is really. And this is where all these kind of little biohacking interventions do make sense because it's such an extreme schedule that it does take a toll on your body. Oh yeah, I mean, imagine that you you you're up from three p.m. to seven a.m. four days in a row, and then you're trying to tray you know, switch your body to going to bed at 11 o'clock at night he's literally jet lagged every every single week doing this right so sleep has got to be i mean 100 percent, i agree that becomes the number one priority and we have to address that first before i even consider letting you do anything in addition to that on those work days but if if i can include some w's and some rotational stuff with the suspension trainer some isometric stuff that's 20 minutes or 30 minutes on his sure. lunch break. 
I, you gotta because we gotta think too. Him being sedentary all day long, sitting at a desk. Yeah, your your body just forms into that, and yeah. like it becomes, it wants to stay in that state. Yes. So and more so as to, a to break it up, yeah, yeah, to get out of that state, I think is helpful. right. Like I, I definitely wouldn't give him an hour break, go hammer the weights at the gym or whatever like that. Like I'm not trying to get no, after just it. Just stimulate the muscles. That's right, and and I think he'll actually see an increase in in energy throughout his day from doing something like that. Plus counter. The, the rolled sh shoulders and sitting forward all day long. So I, I do see some benefit to that. But, of course, I would, as a coach who's coaching him, I would want, like, detail, like, uh, how hard are you training? What are you doing? And mm -hmm. less is more with someone like that if we're going to be doing it on the work days. But, yeah, dress sleep first. I love the recommendation, too, with the getting out. Yeah. You blue, know, blue blockers. Blue blockers. And this is where all the biohacking stuff, you know, come, totally. could come Even in handy. Juve Light would help. Yep. Yeah. Our next caller is Sean from the U.K., Hey, Sean, how can we help you? Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, so I was just wondering, is there a downside to doing maybe a, uh, a full body split one week followed by push-pull legs the week after and then, and then just sort of continuing in that rotation? Um, not really. I'd say the only drawback from doing such a you know back-and-forth switch is it's hard to identify which one's working better for your body. So I, I would typically recommend sticking to one for four weeks switching to the other one for four weeks just to see which one works better for you. But if you're pretty advanced, you know your body, uh, and you've trained this way before, not really. There's not really – I mean, as long as the volume is equated throughout the whole week, it's not going to – it shouldn't make that big of a difference. Not to mention there's some consistency even in that. Right. Right, because he's doing the same rotation. Right. So you still can get some feedback on where you're probably feeling better or making progress versus – I think where this – we're I think we talk mostly about – this not being ideal is the people that uh, change every workout. Yeah. Right. So you're full body one day, then you're splitting up another day. You're doing high reps, low reps. You're like every workout is constantly changing. Then it's really hard to measure. But if you're being consistent in in one week and you're doing a, a body part split one week and then you're doing a push pull thing the next and and then you're always kind of going through that rotation, I think that's okay. I think there's nothing wrong with that, especially if you've been lifting for a long time. Cool. Yeah, that, that's really helpful because I, I was think, thinking about that because like, I'm I am trying to be as consistent as possible. And I wonder, like, because I, I tend to do a bit more volume on the push pull legs week rather than mm. I do more more sort of supersets, I guess, on push pull legs. And then now, how, 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 how long how long you been training, Sean? So I'd, I'd probably about four years, but um, I, w I was pretty consistent before the first lockdown, and then the gyms closed and it and it sort of turned everything upside down. But um, I've been I've been back in for a few months and I think I'm I've I've got over the hump of not being consistent <laughs> now if you know what I mean. Have you noticed the one thing that I noticed when I was doing the split routine more often I would overreach on leg day specifically too. So has that ever been an issue or or is it pretty much uh you know you get a nice uh, dose of of intensity? Yeah, it's, it's definitely a nice dose. That's why, because from listening to you guys, it was all, I, I've heard you mention that uh, full body is the, the best way to go, really. Mm -hmm. um, but I, re I, I really, I like doing a leg day. I, re I, like, I enjoy the, the feeling of, of, of really burning my legs out and, and the, the working the muscle groups together on push day. I really enjoy that as well. So that, that was the main thing behind it, because I'm really enjoying push pull legs, but I want to yeah. get the best benefits by doing full body like you guys say to do now now sean have you in your four years of lifting have you ever followed a routine like to the t have you ever purchased a program or ran like somebody else's like a coach writing a program for you uh, no I've, I've never purchased one I've, I've i've always just i've always really done push pull legs and just scoured the internet and found and sort of made my own routines off from like what i found on google basically so i mean if you'd be open to it, I would love to see you follow one program all the way through. And what I normally tell someone like you who's got experience and kind of knows what they like is like, listen, I'm, what I will tell you is that you can most certainly manipulate and change things. But if you just give me those three months, let me program your training for three months, follow it to a T, trust the process, and just let me see what, what happens from you. Um, I actually think that you would you would see some benefit from just sticking to a, a routine that somebody who's non-biased is has created for you because we we all have our tendencies and you know this because we you listen to the show and we all talk about this is we and we're still guilty of this 
to this day, uh, with all of our experience of, of coaching and training and writing programs, I mean, there's there's never a shortage of what I should do in the gym. I still have tendencies. I still have exercises I like to do, rep ranges, body part splits, specific ways. And I always kind of gravitate back to those things. And one of the nice things about having somebody who's created a program for you is it's you're not allowing that to creep in your decision on how you train. You're following a program. And if it's written very well by somebody who knows what they're doing, it should have some beautiful progress from it. So I, I would challenge you to try that at least once in your life where you you stick to something and uh, the guys would be more than willing to probably send you one for free to try out. It yeah, would be- let's, let's shoot them over maybe Maps Aesthetic. Yeah. How's that sound, Sean? Uh, that'd be brilliant, yeah. I yeah. mean, I think that that's probably something that maybe I'm looking for maybe then just to something that's a, a long program that I can stick to. And yeah, that, that'd be brilliant. Thanks, guys. Yeah, no yeah. problem. We'll send yeah. it. By the way, I have no idea where Leeds is in England. I know you told Doug earlier that's where <laughs> you're from. How close is that to Birmingham? Is that far? <laughs> Um, it's about a two and a half hour drive, maybe. Okay, so I was just the reason why I'm asking. That's where Dorian Yates's uh, gym is. He's obviously the best English bodybuilder of all time. So I want to know if you ever visited his gym. Oh no, no, yeah. I'm not done that yet. Uh, get well, over, go over there, take some pictures, and DM me. I, yeah. I, I would love to check. I'd love to go check out his gym. <laughs> well, <That's- laughs> follow follow the program, Sean. Trust the process. Follow it to a T. Resist the temptation to want to change and manipulate it just because you, you you know what you're doing and you've been doing this for a while. Trust the process, and then and then circle back with us and 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 tell me what you learned, what you felt uh, about that whole process. So we're gonna send it to you for yeah. free. So you got it. Okay, so there's there's no excuses why you shouldn't do it. Now just trust the process and stick with it. All right, that's brilliant. Yeah, I'll I'll get back in touch once once I've done it. I'll I'll give you an update halfway through. And then, uh, I appreciate it right. at the end. Thanks, Sean. Great. Thanks, guys. See you later. Thank you. You know, some of my, some of my favorite listeners come from England. I just because just their accent. Well, no, it's not just because of the accent. They, they have their sense more, of humor. Yeah, sense yeah of humor. No, it's just it is. so it's typically it's you know on par. kind of matches ours. But yeah, I've I've wanted to go there so bad just to visit Dorian Yates's uh, basement gym. He's got like this old basement oh, yeah. gym. You're watching these videos that are just it's just it's like beautiful. It's glorious. It's at where are we going? You know, the, but yeah, what you said, Adam's perfect because if he hasn't followed a structured program, he's going to be like you said, he'll follow, he'll be falling into his old tendencies and never really potentially seeing his full potential. Well, I can say that so confidently because this is still my fault today. That's everybody. Uh, yeah. yeah. 20 years in this game, I, I myself think, and all my friends think I'm pretty good at writing programs, know what I'm doing. But I tell you right now, if I follow ours and, yeah. and stick with it, I always progress. And if it, it accelerates the results, it does. I mean, if it's written well with that intention, it's because it's non biased. You're not, there's no emotion in it. We sat down, we wrote it with the intention of this is the most ideal way for this avatar that we're building in our mind to follow a program. So when someone goes in, you just don't think that way. Oh, I feel like this today. Like, I don't really feel exactly. like doing Turkish yeah. get ups. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and you start to you modify it. Yeah. yeah. And is, is that okay? Sure. You're fine. It's not going to, it's not going to hurt you and you're still going to be healthy. For longevity. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's great. But yeah, if you, if you specifically want to change your body and That's have right. like a, an amazing physique, you, you, you want to do a, a legit program. Exactly. Look, if you like our information, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have lots of free giveaways. Lots of free guides covering everything from fat loss to muscle building, body sculpting, even guides for personal trainers. Head over to mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. In the long term, you get all of your lows. Low energy, low mood, brain fog, or low cognitive ability. And the reason is that it's chronic. And the reason we can say Yes, in the short term and then eventually long term as well, you've got skin rashes, you've got headaches, you've got allergies, you've got asthma, you've got low mood, you have autoimmune, bloating, gas, 